Majority of the e-commerce store owners have certain phases that they take their product through. However, I personally believe after looking at so many e-commerce brands that about 90% of the e-commerce store owners just get rid of their bad products way too quickly. Now, for those of you that are the OG followers, you know exactly where I started. I've been doing Google ads for, you can say, quite some time now. And within this time period, I was one of these people where I would kind of test a product reluctantly. I would let it spend until my cost per purchase or my profit margins and the moment that it kind of crossed my profit margin without that purchase I would go all crazy and I would just exclude that product forever from my Google ad campaign and oftentimes I didn't really take anything else into consideration as to whether my bids were correct or not whether the campaign even was correct for that product or not and a lot of these kinds of external factors would be actually the reason why that product failed in the first place and for those of you that don't know let me give you a very quick lesson or what makes a product fail. So in essence, what we know is that the bid is one of the main reasons why a product works, including the quality score. So the quality score is essentially the score from one to 10, which Google kind of gives to your products. It's based on various different things like the landing page experience, the overall bid, the CTRs, etc., etc. All of these things influence the quality score, which then influences whether your products and your ad even does well or not. So when there are so many different factors, which which kind of determines whether you will find success with your product or not, it doesn't really make sense, at least to me right now, that you should just be very strict when it comes to excluding your product. So the way that I handle my bad products, which are basically getting excluded, or those losing products, like some people like to call it, is slightly a bit different than what I used to recommend or what I used to do. So right here on my screen, as you guys see, I currently have my own e-commerce brands ad account open, and currently there are only three different campaigns running. The first campaign is a performance max campaign second one is a low bid general testing campaign if you have no idea what i just said watch some of my other videos on what i recommend when it comes to successfully launching and scaling your campaigns with google ads but the third one a very simple search campaign also known as a branded search campaign by the way this is the same exact kind of launch strategy i kind of for my e-commerce clients as well under my google ads agency your marketing which if you're doing currently thirty thousand dollars or more in total revenue from google ads or in general you need a little bit of extra help scaling your brand to the next level to 50k a month 100k a month and so forth go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together and make that happen but in majority of the cases what ends up happening is that the product either works in the main testing campaign which i have running in this case a performance max campaign or it ends up just flopping and i need to kind of exclude it so what happens after now again one very easy way to go about this is to actually start another campaign and have two different campaigns actually Actually, not just one so another one would be the winners campaign and the second one would be the losers campaign so obviously whatever is a winning product from this the testing campaign which we have running would go inside that winners campaign but whatever product you need to exclude for whatever reason from this testing campaign would then go into the losers campaign and by the way very important you follow this make sure it's a smart bidding based campaign so like maybe a performance max campaign to just a maximized click standard shopping or a enhanced cpc or manual cpc standard shopping this strategy won't work that way so that's really the first step kind of segregate your winners and losers into their own separate campaign so by now at the very top you have that main testing campaign and there should be two lines drawn out of that box so one to the left which could be known as the main winners campaign and one to the right known as the losers campaign so now the winners campaign it's ready set to go obviously those are just winning products whatever got more than three or five sales consecutively or whatever your other criteria is but for that winners campaign obviously if there are more winning products from there you have the option of segregating it even further but that is for another video if you want me to make a video on that let me know down in the comment section now we're gonna focus on the losers campaign itself so within the losers campaign we now need to test those products once again because this smart bidding campaign by the way which should be ideally a performance max running with no target ROAS is gonna go out and start spending money obviously not every product from this will recover some products however based on my own experience working with hundreds of e-commerce brands now and over millions of dollars of ad spend experience i can tell you that some will recover some will do well but what do you do with the ones that don't recover now is it the time if you're ready to say goodbye to those products from that losers campaign forever you might be in a too big of a rush and here's exactly why even though those got tested ideally with a performance max campaign or some type of smart bidding type we don't know whether that is a real collective test for that given product simply because again it was a smart based campaign type google was in 
control. So if you did it correctly, you should not have kind of inserted any type of target ROAS to it. And that's the right way to go. We don't want to interfere in Google's test because Google is a hundred thousand times smarter than us as human. We don't want to take over control. We want to let Google decide the right fit. But even in that situation, there could be external factors which could be contributing to the success or in this case, failure of that product. And some of these could include that Google just couldn't find the right kind of audience for that. And hence it ended up showing it to a completely wrong audience type. And you had no say over it because again, it was smart based bidding strategy. But another thing could be that maybe the bid Google chose, maybe your account in general is more on the newer side. And because of that, since it doesn't have enough data, it wasn't able to really kind of pinpoint whether that bid would be ideal for it. And as a result, it ended up showing the product for a similar audience type, but those audience members weren't really in the buying intent. There could be a wide variety of different issues going on here. So the ideal way to go about this is exactly what is shown on my screen. So as you can see a bunch of different campaigns here, but what I want you to kind of take a closer look at is this campaign, which is called the graveyard campaign for currently running the Canada only. And of course, every country that you target should have a graveyard campaign, but the strategy behind this graveyard campaign should be extremely simple. So again, as I told you, you should already have that losing campaign by now for all of the losers and only those losers that are even bigger losers in that campaign, which still didn't get any results, get thrown into this graveyard campaign. And this is basically their ultimate journey towards the end, which is towards their death. So it's kind of sounds sad now that I think about it. And it definitely sucks offended any product feelings out there. But that's just the reality. Not every product is made to sell. Not every product is going to be in demand forever. I mean, basically every product has its own product life. So that's essentially what the graveyard campaign is for. Now let's go inside the settings. The so first things first, before I even go in further, let's change this to all time and look at the results. So, so far we have a 2.42 X row as 1.50 conversions because it's 0.50 because we're running on linear attribution. This month it's at 8.44 X row. So as you can see already starting to get results. And by the way, there's other accounts with much more statistically significant data than this. I'm just showing this because this is the newest campaign for one of my clients under my Google ads agency, your marketing. So don't go down in the comment section saying how this is not enough data. I'm just kind of pulling stuff out of my, you know what, because I have a lot of other data that I kind of backs this up but just because this is a newer campaign i thought it would be best to show this campaign right now and again i said newer because if we look at the last 30 days it was essentially started just a few days ago so once it loads up we will be able to see exactly when this was started so as you can see right here july 18th july 19th when i'm recording video it's august 4th so it's been about more or less about 10 15 days so not too much of a time period and it just recently started getting data so now if we go on over to settings we can see exactly why it's starting to get sales and by the way this campaign should run along with your other winners losers all those campaigns consecutively this should never be stopped but right now it's on maximize clicks running at a 38 cent euro bid limit and right now a dollar is equal to one euro so it's basically 38 cents usd but again country is canada so the way to properly set this up is to start it at a very low bid and i recommend any bid between 30 cents to 40 cents so don't go over that but don't really go too under because you should already have a general testing campaign that's at a low bid of 10 cents if you follow but this is just an ideal bid to test those products again on their final journey towards their graveyard and that's really all the campaign setting that you need to focus on everything else pretty much the same no search networks right here location just target one country and campaign priority set it at low because again we want this to kind of run in the background for those products which are already excluded from everything else those are just the final test for those products so that's essentially what i'm doing right now more and more often with my failed products so again to recap number one started with a general testing campaign it could be smart based or it could be standard shopping doesn't matter and then it will segment out two ways number one segmentation winner number two loser from the losers we're going to segment it out even further to another campaign type called the graveyard, which is what we went over. And this is the three step phase or three step process, as you can say, that I take my bad products to. Now, again, I love feeling my winning products. That's all I really focus on. But at the same time, I know there's way too many factors that are hidden factors, by the way, which we just don't know about that could cause a product to become a losing product at any given time. So I kind of want to hold my horses. I don't want to kind of rush into decisions and just take things through slow. Let Google decide, let Google give me data and this three step step method is the perfect method I've seen recently work time and time again. But again, if you're doing around $30,000 or more per month in revenue with your e-commerce brand, you need just a little bit of extra help scaling your e-commerce brands to the next level. Go to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can make that happen. But if you find any type of value in this video, destroy that like button and destroy that subscribe button. And I will see you in my next video.